So you're interested in playing Havoc Demon Hunter as your main in 10.1 of Dragonflight. Well, in this video, I'll be giving you the strengths and the weaknesses of Havoc Demon Hunter moving into patch 10.1 of Dragonflight. As a Havoc Demon Hunter, you channel the power of demons to get your powers, allowing you to do crazy things like going into your demonic form to, or blasting your enemies with chaos damage. As a spec, you are a very mobile, magic-based melee specialization that is incredibly tanky with self-heal and against magic damage, but weak against physical damage. Your damage profile revolves around your I-beam and essence break windows, causing you to deal very large burst damage in those windows or while during the demonic buff, and in AoE, a lot of your damage will come from Immolation Aura, Rage Fire, and your Throw Glaives causing you to have a lot of things to balance, being a very satisfying damage profile with very frequent burst windows that can scale very well into different pull sizes. Your mastery over your demonic energies also offers you a ton of unique utility, namely Chaos Brand, a 5% magic damage done debuff that you apply to enemies that affects everybody in your party or raid and is very, very powerful. We also bring the very unique uh, Raid CD Darkness, allowing anyone standing within it a 20% chance to dodge any incoming source of damage when it happens. We also have good other utility, we bring a purge, we bring slows with our glaives, we bring a ranged interrupt, although the ranged interrupt isn't incredibly far but it still has range. We bring things like imprison which is one of the only hard CCs in the game and we also have sigil of misery as an AOA fear and chaos nova as an AOE stun. If any of these things sound interesting to you then keep watching as we go over the strengths and weaknesses of Havoc Demon Hunter in the upcoming patch. So what are Havoc's strengths? Well Havoc's strengths lie in three things. One, their class fantasy and playstyle. Two is their frequent burst damage windows. And three is their AoE damage. Those are primarily Havoc's three strongest things and the three big reasons to play the class. So let's go over them. So first is the playstyle and class fantasy. And for Havoc Demon Hunter, it's very, very strong and very, very unique. Now, out of all the class characters in the game, out of all the different classes and specs, momentum is something that is very unique to Havoc Demon Hunter. You won't find anything like it anywhere else. The demand to trade that movement for damage is something that only Havoc Demon Hunter has. Now, while you could argue that this is something you don't like, and that is certainly something I'll cover in the weaknesses section, momentum and the movement for damage for Havoc Demon Hunter is something that is enjoyable for a lot of people and is very, very unique in a playstyle. If you want something that's very fun and very unlike any of the other specs in this game, then momentum for Havoc Demon Hunter is one of the most unique playstyles in World of Warcraft. Havoc also has very strong class fantasy with their demon form and all of their demonic abilities. Their abilities just look and feel cool and good to press. Like when you push Ivy and you can really feel uh, how cool it is when you turn into a demon and you blast people with just this bolt of chaos energy coming from your eyes. Metamorphosis also is similar. Having you turn into that demon form is very cool. You can feel it. You're stuck in there moving around. All your abilities look cooler. They're stronger. So that class fantasy of harnessing the power of demons to do that damage is really strong in Havoc Demon Hunter. And it's something you can feel throughout the spec in all of its abilities, all of its button pressures, all of its animations. We have demon wings. All of those things are very, very present throughout all of Havoc demon hunter and is definitely one of the spec strengths next up is havoc's burst profile now in raid and in mythic plus havoc resolves almost exclusively around the essence break burst combo allowing you to deal most of your damage from that window with your empowered death sweeps and annihilations this essence break combo in my opinion is pretty fun to execute and gives us a very strong burst window on a very short cooldown in raid and in mythic plus i uh, it is 40 seconds for each one with your i beam lining up with every single one you do the combination of i beam plus the essence break hit plus plus the death sweep, plus the two annihilations, leads to a ton of damage in a short window and is very, very strong and very, very good for Havoc Demon Hunter in a lot of different scenarios where you need that damage fairly often. Now in AoE, it's a little bit stronger. You can get a kind of an AoE hit with your death sweeps. In single target with meta, you can get two death sweeps into one essence break window, which means very, very, very large burst damage. Oftentimes you can see uh, hitting for like 500,000 on a crit with your first blood if everything lines up well for you. So that burst damage potential in that 40 second window is very, very powerful for Havoc. Uh, it's a very good thing for them to have. They also have the ability to do very good uh, damage outside of that. Now, this is very, of course, on a caveat. Um, their non-essence break buttons, stuff like throw glaive in AoE, emulation or in AoE, or just kind of uh, keeping up chaos strike on single target, are determined on a few different things. 
Um, you know, you need uptime, stuff like that. But overall, Havoc has a very valuable damage profile with that 40 second burst. Uh, whenever it is valuable, it will be very, very good. Another strength of Havoc Demon Hunter is their AoE damage. Now this loops back into what I was talking about before, where they have a very powerful window every 40 seconds where they deal a ton of damage. The I-Beam plus Feldev combo, as well as Essence Break with your Death Sweeps, ends up doing out a ton of damage in an AoE on a very short 40 second cooldown, which is very, very strong. Now, Havoc also has other options for AoE. They have the Throw Glaive package, which actually deals a ton of sustained AoE damage in three targets. Uh, it's very, very powerful for the amount of targets it hits. And they also have things such as Fell Rush, which is very soft capped, not uncapped, but soft capped. And they also have Immolation Aura and Rage Fire, two things that combine to do a lot of AoE damage. Now, while Rage Fire's damage is scaled off of three hits of Immolation Aura, the hit itself is uncapped. So, in certain scenarios, you can end up absolutely blasting with these abilities and doing a ton of AoE damage. It can be very, very powerful, happen very, very often, and have tons of tools pack to pack. Also, Chaos Brand's very powerful Mythic Plus when uh, ranged are going to be so strong in 10.1. Now there is one final thing I want to mention for a strength for Havoc Demon Hunter, and that is their self-survivability or their sustainability. Now, in terms of cooldowns for defensives, Havoc doesn't have much. Uh, they have Blur, and that's about it. It's very hard to take Netherwalk, although Netherwalk does exist, but it's very hard to take it. But Blur itself is a decent cooldown. 1 minute 20% defensives is pretty much the norm for a few different classes, so, you know, it's not bad. But Havoc has a ton of Leech and a ton of passive magic damage mitigation, as well as slightly increased stamina because of our class tree. So on its own, Havoc takes a ton less magic damage, just from all sources, just natively and passively. So whenever a large hitting magic damage ability goes out, oftentimes you can see yourself living it without even using a defensive, where other classes might need to use a personal for that. On top of that, we have things that can help you heal yourself back to full. Now in the next patch, we're getting 25% more HP, which does mean it'll be harder to top yourself with your own leech. But with things like Fell Devastation healing you, uh, killing your Fodder of the Flame Demon healing you, and just overall our leech damage, it should be very easy to find yourself topped up without too much need of a healer as a Havoc Demon Hunter, which can definitely be very powerful in certain scenarios. If you've been enjoying the video so far, make sure you pause, scroll down, hit the like button, and drop a comment to help spread the video to more people. Help me grow my channel. Uh, also, if you're really enjoying it, hit the sub button or go to the comments, click the link, and become a channel member. Help support me make more content. I'll have tons more WoW content throughout 10.1 and through the summer, so stick in for that. Now enjoy the rest of the video. Now let's move on to the weaknesses of Havoc Demon Hunter, or the reason why you might not want to play one in the upcoming patch. In terms of weaknesses, Havoc does have a few. One of those is going to be, now I mentioned this as a strength, but the playstyle can also be seen as a weakness, so we'll cover that. Uh, their single target damage is definitely a big major issue. Uh, likewise, their ability to take physical hits is a big problem. And finally, there's a bit of a community perception issue around Havoc Demon Hunter, which I'll touch on at the end of this segment. So first, let's talk about Momentum. Now, I mentioned that Momentum is a very unique and fun playstyle, but on the same side of that, on the other side of the coin, it's also very demanding. It, lots of motion goes on. So if you're not somebody who likes that, or if you're motion sick, right away, Havoc Demon Hunter is just kind of dead in the water for you. But on top of that, Havoc Demon Hunter is one of those classes that asks the mo almost the most of you of any spec in the game for WoW. So there's a ton of things you have to balance, a ton of positional awareness that is required for Havoc Demon Hunter so that you don't fell rush into a thing or backflip off the cliff or backflip into a, a puddle. There's a lot of plates you have to spin while doing your rotation for a very minimal game. Momentum itself is only like a 5 or 8% damage buff, so it's very, very small. And there's lots of things you have to do to keep that damage buff up. So there's lots of little things for a Havoc Demon Hunter to think about and to do while playing the game uh, that oftentimes can be overwhelming for newer players and can also downright be detrimental to you at times. So that by itself is a downside. On the other side of that, there's also the fact that there are no builds right now for Havoc Demon Hunter that require you to not move for damage. What I mean by that is that momentum by as a talent is part of the issue but the left side of our talent tree also has a ton of like movement based things and right now there are no builds that can't avoid the movement based stuff um that are just they're so far behind if they don't take those now there is one called no mover but even for no mover which is a pure single target build you do have to be fell rushing for fury and it is your most efficient generator so 
The move for damage thing is often hated by a lot of the community. Yes, it's very unique. Yes, you won't find anything else like it, but lots of people do not enjoy it, and there's no escape from it if you want to do damage. So if you're playing a Havoc Demon Hunter, you got to get used to the movement. You have to do the movement. There's no way around it. So that is definitely a big downside to Havoc. Now, another issue for Havoc Demon Hunter, and probably one of the biggest ones for next tier, is going to be our single target damage. Just flat out, we are very subpar on single target damage. One of the worst specs, we're probably bottom six, bottom seven in the game at single target, uh, which is very unfortunate, especially when next tier is almost predominantly single target damage. Our single target damage revolves around basically maintaining demonic as much as possible and just throwing out as many annihilations and death sweeps as possible within those windows, buffing them when we can with with, uh, essence break and things like that now for the as a damage profile that a sucks it's just like a maintenance buff we have to extend uh, but it also leads to us just not having that strong of a single target damage our tier set next tier is also not very powerful which leads into that and finally on top of that a lot of the bosses next tier have mechanics or otherwise effects that force you out of range and give force downtime Anytime Havoc Demon Hunter has some forced downtime, you're going to be a little bit sad, you're going to be a little bit upset because it's going to cause you to miss um, button pushes, which will cause you to miss extending your demonic and thus causing you to lose out on damage. So that is very unfortunate. Um, our damage profile next here for raid specifically is not looking very good. So that is one big downside for Havoc. Now, of course, we do need Chaos Brand that has to be in the raid somewhere. So Havoc Demon Hunter will probably have a spot somewhere, but uh, our damage profile is not looking very good. Another big weakness for us is our physical damage intake. Now, I mentioned in the strengths how strong we are against magic damage, which we are very, very strong against. But against physical damage, all we really have is blur. Again, uh, nether walk is very hard to take, very impossible to take. Um, so we don't really have a lot of options to fight against that physical damage intake. Uh, so whenever we get hit by things that are physical, like uh, the early unnerfed version of Last Boss Court of Stars comes to mind, Last Boss of No Good Offensive comes to mind, those physical hits really, really get through us if we don't have Blur. Uh, we're a very low armor class. The only thing we really have is that one node in our tree that gives us like armor whenever Immolation Aura is up. But because we're such a low armor class to begin with, giving us 10% armor barely does anything. So in terms of physical damage intake, if there's a boss that does a lot of physical damage, uh, Havoc is going to be very, very squishy in those scenarios because basically all we have is blur and our leech to keep us topped. We don't have any of that innate magic damage resistance that makes us so tanky. Now, I think the final thing about playing Havoc Demon Hunter is just a bit of the community perception. Havoc Demon Hunter is one of the largest player bases in the game. Uh, you'll see on Heroic Logs, there's over 200,000 of them registered sometimes, so it is a very big player base. And that oftentimes leads to tons of people having a negative perception of Havoc Demon Hunter just in general. You might find a bit of a hard time being invited to keys sometimes just because the player base is so wide and everybody has a story of a Havoc Demon Hunter fell rushing into something and dying and throwing something or just overall being an idiot. Uh, that does happen from time to time, but uh, generally there is a bit of a negative perception to Demon Hunter in the community. People are very excited whenever we're bad uh, and they kind of complain a lot whenever we're good. Just kind of happens. It's a bit weird, honestly, whenever warlocks exist and they've been good for, I don't know, like eight years now in a row. Uh, and here we are just trying to do our best. But it is something that comes with playing Havoc Demon Hunter. Uh, they're just jealous they don't get to turn into a demon. That's what it is. So that is going to be my quick overview of the strengths and weaknesses of Havoc Demon Hunter moving into 10.1. Now, I'm not going to tell you outright if you should or should not play Havoc Demon Hunter. I personally love this spec and will continue to play it even if it's not going to be the very best in raid. And you're still going to see content from me. But I want to give you guys kind of my thoughts on what's strong and what's weak about Havoc moving into the next patch. If there's something I missed, obviously I'm trying to keep the video a little short. There's tons of more stuff you can dive into. I could probably talk for like an hour about this kind of thing. But comment down below what you think the strengths in Havoc or the weaknesses for Havoc are. Kind of chime in, see what I missed. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree with me. Let me know. Now, with that, that is going to be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Likes make the algorithm very happy. Help to spread the video, help my channel grow. And if you really enjoyed it, obviously drop a sub or become a channel member. Help support me, and I would really love you for that. So with that, that's going to be the video today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday with the next video. Peace.